There is a sense <clears throat> that people who voted Leave may not get almost any of the big pledges that they thought they were voting for, whether it's the NHS pledge, whether it's immigration numbers, whatever it may be. Is that a valid concern of people? I mean, Theresa May has said, look, we're going to Brexit, but obviously the terms of the Brexit are down yeah. to <clears throat> us now having discussion and deliberation. Well, I think the key thing is when the vote took place, there were three key elements that people voted for to vote for leave, and these were always clear. One was take back control of your borders. Two was take back control of our laws to be outside the European uh, Court of Justice ambit. And three was to take back control of our money. So it was, in a sense, clear that said, look, what we believe you can do and should do with your money is to use the money that you are giving to the European Union, many billions, actually to spend on programmes here. And the NHS was number one in line. Now, I still believe that is the right thing to do. What Theresa May has said is she's not going to commit to any of that at this stage until they're clear and through on Article 50. I mean, that could take a year or okay. so, a year and a half, maybe Talking two Talking of, of exits, yeah. Keith Vaz. <laughs> uh, should he be falling no on his sword? He's showing yeah. no sign of wanting to do so. Look, it's very difficult for all of us to make a judgment on this because we don't absolutely know any other than we've seen in the newspapers uh, or whether there's any more to come, and I have no idea about that at all. I do know, as I uh, in the House last night, I did bump into, I won't say who, a member of the committee who said that they thought uh, that it was going to be probably intolerable uh, going forward to have him still as chairman, maybe for an interim period or not, but nonetheless to be there whilst this sort of Should set of he go purely up. on moral grounds? Mm. Or is it only valid for him to stand down if there is perceived to be a genuine conflict of interest? Where are we with this whole debate about politicians and their behaviour? If there is a genuine conflict of interest, uh, then I think the committee will take the decision and therefore it won't be up to and him. And do you think there is? It's, it's a, it's a, the, I was talking actually to a, a, a senior lawyer last evening and uh, they said to me there is a real issue here about what were these drugs that were being taken mm -hmm. and was there an illegality and he had said if there's illegality at all that's no longer his decision that has to be the committee mm -hmm. says look this means there's going to be further maybe prosecutions. I don't know the exact detail all I know is if the committee decides in the course of events that have happened or going forward mm -hmm. there will be a serious conflict of interest then they will take that decision. But if there's any ambiguity in this, then Keith himself may say, look, it's too early, I'm going to defend myself, it's not fair, surely I should have a fairer hearing, and that may, that may hold but for the do moment. do you think that MPs should be held to a higher standard of behaviour? Because they're paid for by the public purse. Well, I think that we should be held to the same standard of behaviour that uh, pertains to everybody else, but on the basis that I think people generally should be held to a reasonable standard of behaviour. If we're setting the laws, then certainly there should be no conflict of interest when we do that. And that's uh, unacceptable if it's clear that for some reason or other we're engaged with something which would persuade us to, to vote in one way. That's wrong. You're meant to declare that, be open about it, and if it's likely to be, you take yourself out of that decision-making process completely. Yeah. And so there is that standard of behaviour because we make laws that other people... But he is chairman of a committee which specifically deals... Yeah with the laws pertaining to drugs and prostitution. And here he is, caught up in a drugs and prostitution scandal. At the very least, should he have declared this? Obviously, it would be a bit fanciful to well, think that he would. Well, but is say, that yeah. where that conflict arises? There's no question there is what appears to be a conflict of interest mm. here, uh, mostly because this was a very serious uh, look at this process mm. and decisions we've been made that may have persuaded the government, mm. such as poppers and things, in which it turns out that maybe he's been involved in that, and that causes a problem. But it, it, uh, there's always that marginal line between whether this was legal or illegal and whether or not it's just simply he's been persuaded because he personally has an interest. And there's lots of things we do in life in which we have a we do yeah, something and then we go and vote for that because we think that's the right thing to do. Well, Peter Tatchell made a perfectly valid point, which is that when, when MPs debate, say, drink driving laws or alcohol yeah. age limits and mm. so on, they don't get, have to declare their drinking habits. You know, almost you could almost construct a conflict with almost everything if yeah. you took this to but its There is that degree. degree. I, I think the main point you want to come to, which I'm sure the committee will come to today, is there any degree of even marginal illegality uh, or abuse or misuse, in which case that becomes a very different issue right. okay. much clearer. Did Boris apologise for that or did he cough up where this money might be coming from to help you out? 
Well, we are just at the start of the process of the negotiations for leaving the European Union. Um, obviously, will it, will no. Will help the NHS? I mean, did well, Boris apologise to you for making well, we, that pledge? 